Again, our God. The Temple Mount is the seat of God, the place the Lord would choose. Hamakom Asher Yivchar Adonai Lohecha. Every day, three times a day, Jews recite this prayer. May it be your will that the Temple be speedily rebuilt in our own time. It's a prayer they prayed for almost 2,000 years. But Jews here in Jerusalem are doing more than just praying. Just a few steps away from the Western Wall, rabbis and craftsmen are building what they call a temple in waiting. We're supposed to build the temple and nothing about that changed. Nothing about that commandment changed. Haim Richman is a director at the Temple Institute in Jerusalem. The Temple Institute is actively engaged in research and preparation for the resumption of the service in the Holy Temple to the extent of actually preparing operational blueprints for the construction of the Temple according to the most modern standards. This menorah is just one of several vessels created for the next temple. It's covered with 95 pounds of pure gold and has a price tag of two million dollars. Piece by piece, the third temple is taking shape with priest garments, vessels of copper, gold, and silver, and a new generation of Levite priests, specially trained for temple service. We have enough in place now to resume the divine service and, and to build the temple. Mm -hmm. But obviously, a lot of things have to happen in order for this to happen. Richmond isn't the only one who's ready to rebuild. You actually have blueprints Architectural oh, yes. drawings for the, yes. the third yes. temple. 3,000 years after King Solomon built the first Jewish temple, another Solomon is laying the foundations for the third. From the womb of my mother, I have a task and a mission in my life, which is connected um, with the rebirth of Israel. Gershon Solomon leads a group called the Temple Mount Faithful. They commissioned these cornerstones for the third temple. The six-ton stones were consecrated with water from the biblical pool of Siloam and cut with diamonds. And why God um, commanded us not to cut them by iron? Don't forget that these are stones for the house of God. They cannot be um, like other stones. For several years, Solomon and his followers tried to place the stones on the Temple Mount, and every year they were stopped by Israeli police. Unfortunately, weakness of the Israeli leadership did not allow us to bring the cornerstone to the right place. The end time temple should be built on the same location of the first and the second temple. But that location is already occupied. The holiest site for Jews is also the third holiest site for Muslims. And neither side is ready to share. The Temple Mount, 35 acres of it, is the most explosive piece of territory on the face of the planet. See, I'm starting because I don't know what to say because it sounds like so out of this, uh, out of this world. I'm accustomed to believe that it will bring harmony, uh, some tranquility in the world, some peace. We have to build it. We have to build it. The emphasis of this time period should not be about the morning, 
The mourning should be a device to put us into a frame of mind to rebuild the temple. That's what it gives us and it will unite us. And we, with this power, we will be able to make the power of our land here in this country. And that's what it will unite us. No other way. We are here in the forest. פה בארץ, אחרי אלפיים שנה של גלות, אז כנראה אנחנו לא כל כך רחוקים. שזה כל כך יפה, שכל פעם בי"ז בתמוז אנשים בוכים עדיין, רואים אותם אחרי אלפיים שנה עוד בוכים על בית המקדש שלנו. פעם זה היה מרכז העולם, לא רק ליהודים, זה היה לכל הגויים מסביב גם. We are the messengers of Hashem to bring the Geula. אהבת חינם תביא את הגאולה. This is the place, this is the heart of the world, this is the apple of God's eyes, this is where it all began. בסופו של דבר גם מגיעים להשראת שכינה בעם ישראל, השראת שכינה בבית המקדש, במקום הר הבית. Jerusalem, eternal city of God. The very word is a symphony to the ear for all to whom the Bible is precious. And at the heart of Jerusalem lies its secret, the holy temple on Mount Moriah, place of the שכינה, the divine presence, called by Isaiah, the house of prayer for all nations. For 2,000 years, the Jewish people have prayed to return to the land of Israel, to Jerusalem, and to rebuild the Holy Temple. Today, we have returned. The city of Jerusalem is built up, a thriving, vibrant city. But what of Jerusalem's secret? What of the dream? For over two decades, the Temple Institute has been recreating the biblically appointed vessels to be used in the Holy Temple in preparation for its rebuilding. Tens of sacred vessels have been completed. These vessels and priestly garments on exhibit in the Temple Institute's Treasures of the Holy Temple exhibition in Jerusalem's Old City are not copies or replicas, but are actually fit to be used according to strict biblical standards in the new Holy Temple. Original source materials such as gold, silver, and copper, and the original sizes and measurements are used exclusively. Each year, 100,000 visitors come to see, learn about, and experience the promise of the Holy Temple. A visit to the Temple Institute is the highlight of a trip to Israel, for in the presence of these vessels, one can feel that the time of the redemption is indeed drawing close. The golden menorah, the golden table of the showbread, the incense altar, and tens of other sacred vessels have been painstakingly and precisely recreated. Silver trumpets, Levitical harps and lyres are ready to be heard once again in the streets of Jerusalem. The priestly garments, including the uniform of the high priest, the ephod, the breastplate and the golden crown, the result of years of intense research and the efforts of Israel's finest artists and craftsmen, are on display for all to see. The Temple Institute provides specially trained guides who explain the history of the Holy Temple, the nature of the divine service, and the significance of the Holy Temple for all mankind. I brought you here to build my house. Build my house.